Okay, so the bathroom project is complete other than fixing this tub now. Now I know from where the camera is, because this is all white and it's not real bright in there, I know you cannot see that crack showing up there on the camera. Uh, it is right, right here and it extends from what I can see from here to here. Uh, when you stand in here, put one foot on each side and kind of rock your body, I don't see it flexing. But there must be some flex in this tub for this crack to have appeared in the first place. So we're not uh, at a point where we want to replace this tub because it's going to mean removing the tiles and redoing the whole thing. So we're going to try a repair. We found an acrylic tub repair kit at Lowe's. I think it was $65 for the kit. And it's got uh, the instruction card in it only has six steps to do. So it's not a big job. I uh, just hope it's going to work out. It's kind of an epoxy paste you have to mix up and I know some of the epoxy products that are out there for different things are incredibly strong. So I'm hoping this does work. So the first step on there was to get this crack cleaned out so it's opened up a little bit. It says to make sure that the damaged area is open. So I'm just going to open this up a little bit. Um, if you don't have a Dremel tool I'm going to use, but if you don't have one you could probably use a box cutter and just come along here with the tip of the blade and, and carve that out into a bit of a V. I'm going to use my Dremel tool on it. You don't have to worry about your volume. Well, when I edit it, I'll turn the volume down. got the the nice finish that they have in the tub I've removed that I can feel it I don't know how much of material I should remove it doesn't tell you the instructions to go a certain depth or anything with it Step two, oh, well, we're still on step one yet. We got to sand around this area with 600 grit paper. And they do give you a very small piece of 600 grit paper in the repair kit. It's not a very big piece, maybe a two inch square. This is wet dry paper, so we'll get some water. If you don't use some water with wet dry paper, because it's so fine, it'll just plug up your sandpaper really fast. I would imagine this step is just to make sure that any cleaning products that we've used over the years, that everything's completely removed so that you get a nice bond with that material. So we're going to clean up our mess we've got there from uh, grinding that stuff out. I was looking online to see if there was other YouTube videos on how to do this and there was a couple I came across for repairing fiberglass tubs but I didn't actually find any for acrylic tubs. So we're just going to go ahead with this instructions that they provide us and hopefully it all works out the way it's supposed to. Okay. I think I've got that dried out. I don't feel any moisture in there. Might show up on the camera now that I've ground that surface layer off. Hopefully it doesn't look like that when it's all finished. 
So mixing this stuff up, start with a quarter teaspoon of paste with 10 drops of hardener. Mix well. Apply a small amount of mix to the damaged area. Put a plastic film, which comes in the kit, over it. Squeeze out the material underneath it. And you leave the plastic on it. And then it's got to sit for about two hours. Then you pull the plastic film off and come back with your wet dry sandpaper. Okay, so we'll mix some of this stuff up. Well, I don't know what this product, this material actually is. But I know what it smells like. Um, if you've ever done any auto body work and worked with Bondo at all, that is exactly what this stuff smells like. I hope it's not Bondo, because Bondo is not flexible. Turn this around maybe I don't know if you can see probably not so the instructions fill the groove in it says and then squeegee that out under the plastic to smooth it out well that is spread out beyond the area that I had ground out the bottom of this tub is textured a little bit too to help it not be slippery when you're standing in it and it may not show up there so i'm not going to get this completely flat with this plastic on here but that's what it says to do and it certainly smells like bondo so now it's got to sit for a couple of hours to harden up and then you can peel that plastic off so it says and start sanding everything back down so we'll come back to it in a couple of hours and see if they're right. Well, we waited three hours and pulled the plastic off. It said it had to sit for two and it pulled a little bit of material out because it's still sticky. It's not completely dry. So I'm just mixed up a little bit more to fill in where it pulled it out of. We put a little more hardener in it this time. So hopefully it'll set up a little bit faster. And I'm going to go back over top of all the way down the crack because this stuff that has more hardener in it, hopefully it'll help everything harden up a little faster. I'm not concerned about having to do this a second time, really, because it said that uh, if it was a large crack and it shrunk into the crack, that you may have to do this again anyhow to put more in. So I'm not too concerned about having to do it again. I just would like to have gotten this over and done with, though. It blends in better than I thought it would originally. It covers up the crack nice. There is gonna be a different in texture when we're finished though, because the rough surface that it has, this spot is gonna end up, after you do all your sanding, it's just gonna be a smooth spot. But if the color all stays blended in, it won't look, you won't notice it very much. And the crack was so fine in there that normally I wear glasses to see at a distance. And when you're standing up in the shower without your glasses on, I never even noticed that crack before. 
So we will start this process again. We'll let that sit. That little bit that's on that stick I was using to put it in there, I'll check it on that in a couple of hours and see if it's dry or still sticky. And uh, before I pull that plastic off again next time, so I don't want to pull it back out again. Okay, well, we're back into this repair in the bathtub here, and I got to say, I'm very disappointed in this product. Uh, it is... I don't know if you can see the name on there of what I actually got. And I'm really disappointed in this. Uh, it said after you mix it up to let it sit for approximately two hours, and then you can come back and start sanding it. It's been almost 48 hours now, and it was finally dry enough that I could start to sand it with their 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. Um, it's still not, I wouldn't say 100% dry, it was a little bit tacky to the touch, but not enough to gum up the sandpaper. Now there's the one spot that I uh, went back a second time and put a little more in because it had sunk into the crack. When I was sanding, I can still see that spot. So I don't know whether it's sunk in again or if it was just rolled out with my sandpaper because it wasn't firm enough or dry enough. So I'm going to go back and mix up some more. Now, I'm mixing it in the jar this time. This is the paste that they provide in the kit in this little jar. It doesn't say anything in the instructions about making sure that this stuff is mixed in the jar, but I'm wondering if maybe it's separated. Uh, it looked consistent, but I got to try something because 48 hours is just ridiculous for this stuff to, to still not be fully dry. So I'm going to try and get this on camera you can see me mixing it the instructions say to mix a quarter teaspoon now there's a quarter teaspoon um, it's my wife's measuring spoon I'm not actually going to use her measuring spoon in this stuff but just so I can see kind of what how much of it that they want me to use yeah that's not working very well They give you a couple of these little wooden stir sticks in the kit. So we'll scoop some out. Now I would say that that's got to be, if I was to fill that measuring spoon up, I would say that's probably a quarter teaspoon of material on there. Now that's more than I need, but just so you can see, uh, going by their instructions, hopefully I'm getting this on camera. So I'm just putting that in a little plastic container and it says to add 10 drops of the hardener. Uh, it says you can add more to make it harden faster, but if you add too much that it can change the color of the mixture. Um, now I know I put more than 10 in the last time I did this and it still hasn't hardened up, but we'll go ahead. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So let's give it, there's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we've gone over by quite a bit. And we just got to make sure we get that all mixed in with the hardener now. It looks like that's all mixed in. I don't see any hardener that's running around separate by itself anymore in there. So I'm going to fill in the little hole that's left and we'll see if hopefully it doesn't take another 48 hours again. So I've already filled in, you can maybe see if I can create a shadow, maybe you can see it's quite thick there right now. So we're just going to flatten that out a little bit. So that smooths it out into that plastic. Yeah, let cure at 21 degrees Celsius for approximately two hours. Well, I'm sure it's not gonna be dry enough in two hours, but like I said, I hope it doesn't take another 48. So we'll come back again and we'll see if this stays filled in, if it dries, if I can sand it, maybe it'll be a couple more days again. We'll see how it goes. It's been almost 24 hours now that it's been sitting. 
the it, it no longer it doesn't stick to my fingers uh, when you run your hand across it it feels kind of like a a rubber latex glove kind of a texture so it's not sticky but it's not slippery like the other tub surface either maybe that's the way it's meant to be maybe that's how this stuff stays flexible maybe it's a little bit softer like a rubber glove so we put those extra 15 drops in that mixture yesterday so that may have made the difference of it drying up faster we also stirred what was in that tiny jar it doesn't say it has to be but we did that also so the bottle of hardener they give you perhaps the hole in the end of the bottle wasn't made the right size so the drops when i was doing 10 drops like the instruction says maybe they were much smaller drops than were intended and that's why it was taking so long to dry so this is dried well enough that I think we're ready to try sanding it. We'll get some water on our paper. All they give you in this kit, they give you a tiny little square of this 600 grit, and this one is the 2000 grit. So I used up the 600, but luckily I had some more of my own that was 600, so I was able to get another piece. It seems to blend in very well for color. It is very white. Now I did put some extra on. I seem to have an issue in the one particular spot where it kept wanting to sink in. So I put a little extra in that one spot. So there is a ridge. It's not a sharp ridge, but it's like a bubble. It's a little higher right in the center. And I'm going to leave some of that there. I'm not going to try and sand it all off. Well, it's not gumming up the sandpaper, so I'm assuming that it is dry enough to for sanding so the the texture of it being like that rubbery feel may be the intended outcome of this product I think I've got the, the edge of it blended in it doesn't feel like there's a, a lip on it at all anywhere it would have been nice if they'd have had a, maybe a grit of sandpaper in between 600 and 2000 but a 1400 grit or something might have been nice in between. They give you a couple of other packages of stuff here we have to use yet. And I believe they're just more of a polishing compound. So after this 2000 grit sandpaper, there's two different grits of that compound that they want you to use and I'm not real concerned about it in my particular situation because as I said the bottom of this tub is already textured uh, to give you some traction in here it's not perfectly smooth like the sides are if I was doing a surface like the sides then I would certainly want to make sure that I used all that to try and get it as smooth as possible so that you can't see the repair when you're done. But it doesn't matter what I do on this, you're always going to see this repair because there's no way to duplicate that texture in this stuff. So it's going to be a smooth spot where this patchwork is done. But as hard as it is for you to see everything here on camera because it's, well, lighting is part of it, but everything blends in it's just as hard to see even when you're here with it right in front of you when I look at it really close I know you can't see this but it almost has like air pockets in it I didn't have that in the first uh, couple of batches that I mixed up but in this one that I've added more hardener and stuff to 
I can see tiny little, little air bubbles. Can't feel them, but I can see them. Well, let's see what this stuff is in these packages. It's not much. I'm sure that's just a fine polishing compound that's finer than your 2000 grit paper. I'm going to call that done. So yeah, it's, it's never going to match the texture around it. Anyhow, it's always going to be a smoother spot. I'm not going to bother with the last one. It's uh, so this one they say is for removing heavy scratch remover, and this is a fine scratch remover. So it's the same type of thing. It's just for finer scratches with a finer grit or finer powder. And that's it. There's no other product to put over this to seal it or anything like that. That is the repair. So now the only thing left to do is see if it stands up or if it's going to crack again. Thanks for watching.